Hi there! I hope you're hungry for K-pop predictions this Christmas, because here I am to bring you some of my K-pop predictions for the next year, 2024. As always, these are only predictions, taking into account what is used to happen in the industry and how a situation for a certain group is, and not exactly what I wish for a group. Also, this year the video is going to be a bit smaller than usual, because I have been really busy lately, but I wanted to give you guys this video, because you always love these predictions videos, and I didn't want to let you without one this year. Now, let's begin. 1 2024's 5th gen is going to be dominated by boy groups, what I mean with this is really simple, I think the most notable releases in groups from the 5th gen next year are going to be, the majority, boy groups. I feel like people have been starving for boy groups for a while, ever since the 4th gen started, and with the change of musical direction of the 5th gen boy groups, I think people will all start giving them more attention. Moreover, this year already showed a bit that, with the majority of the big 5th gen groups being boy groups, we had Zykers, Boy Next Door, Reyes and Zero Basion, against Baby Monster and Kiss of Life. Also, next year, we are getting new boy groups from Pletus, JYP, and RBW, and as I said in my previous video, I especially think that RBW's NXD are going to surprise a lot of people. 2 Island 2 is going to be the survival show of 2024. For those who don't know, Island was the survival show that made in Hypen, and it was a show from Net and Big Hit, under the label Belift. Island 2 is going to be a female version of that show, but this time Net is joining with the black label. Yes, the Teddy label, the one under YG. The label that is most known for Blackpink, but Blackpink isn't even under them. With this background, and also with the recent debut of Baby Monster, I think many people will be interested to see how the group from this show will turn out, will it be similar to Blackpink, will it be completely different. Also, we'll get new music from Teddy, that is not for Blackpink or Somi. Which will be different, or I think so, Island had a lot of songs for the show, and I think Teddy is one of the main producers for the Black Label. Island had an interesting setting, so it will be interesting to watch the show, that will probably be full of drama. I also think the resulting group will be really popular, at least in the short run. 3 Baby Monster will release one of the biggest hits of 2024, I see everyone trashing on Baby Monster and saying they will flop, but this is giving me 2020 vibes, when everyone was trashing Espa, and then boom, they released Next Level in 2021. I can completely see that happening to Baby Monster, because at the end of the day, they are under YG, and their debut has been really successful. For Kiss of Life Future will not be that bright, I absolutely love how the group is bringing a more mature sound to girl groups again, and they have the potential to go really big, but they are coming from a small agency after all, and I feel like at the minimum problem, people will drop them. It's giving me Stacy vibes, where they were everywhere when they debuted, and then they released Beautiful Monster and ever since then the general public has forgotten about them. I can see Kiss of Life having a harder time next year, mainly because people will trash about one of their releases, but do not worry, they will still be one of the top 5th gen groups, but I doubt they will go much further than that, unfortunately. 5 Moonbyul and Solar are not renewing with RBW, and Ween is not renewing with the L1VE. I feel like the first part of this prediction is actually pretty obvious, Moonbyul has given so many signs she won't be resigning with RBW, especially after what they did to her in 2022, and I doubt Solar will be the only member to stay in RBW. I say doubt, because Solar had actually a good run as a soloist under RBW, both of her solos did well and were well promoted, but at the same time, every other member has had at least four official solo releases, and Solar still only has two, so she might feel like RBW is letting her behind. But Munbyul is certainly leaving, it will be a total shocker if she stays. By the way, I don't think this will affect Mamamoo much, and probably they will still manage group activities under RBW, but even if they don't do that, they are still maintaining as a group, do not worry about that, that's not even on the table. The second part may come as a surprise, but Ween's contract with the L1VE must be coming to an end, 
and I don't think she's renewing, after all of the drama that happened there, and also on how poorly her last comeback did, which showed she suffered a lot of backlash from the general public. Also, the L1V doesn't have much going on for them, other than Ween, they only have zero Baseon's Sung Han Bin, and that doesn't seem to be of any good to Ween. 6 2024 will be a really soft year, contract-wise, what I mean by this is that there won't be any groups disbanding or having major differences in the way they work now, because in 2024 it's going to expire the contracts of the groups that debuted in 2017, that aren't that many, and the major ones like Card and Dreamcatcher have already renewed. I think the major news regarding to that are going to be Mamamoo's renewals, and the probable disbandment of Wakey Makey. Seven Onius are releasing their biggest hit solo debuts, here we have my predictions for Onius. Basically, Siaho is enlisting next year, probably around June, so that makes things a bit different than before. I think RBW is going to push for Onius as much as they can in these months, so they'll probably have a comeback now in the beginning of the year, with an EP, and then one final comeback as OT5 for a while, around May, with a full album, right before Sia Ho enlists. Between that period, we are probably getting some tours. I feel like they are going to experiment with their sound, and release something new, yet Onius-like in these two comebacks, always with a more elegant and mature vibe. And I think their last release as OT5 for a while is going to hit the general public hard, and they are going to go out for a while with their most popular song to date. I think this comeback will probably break a lot of records for them, and will make a lot of people sad for not knowing them sooner. Their first release will probably do quite well too, better than their two releases of this year. Before Siaho enlists, I think we are getting the first solo debut of the group, between their two comebacks, and I think it's either going to be Siaho or Wan Wang. Siaho, because he's going to be the first one to enlist. Wan Wang, because he's the most popular member, and he's also the oldest in the company. Either way, I think the solo debut is going to do better than expected, and cause some attention between the solo releases of next year. In the second half of the year, we are probably not seeing Onius that much, probably another solo debut or a debut of a subunit. I'm still wondering if RBW is going to make them enlist altogether, if they are going to continue activities as a group of four, I don't know, RBW is unpredictable. 8. I've are releasing a massive hit next year, I just know I've are finally releasing a song that will make on to the international general public, and become one of those iconic K-pop songs that even non-K-pop stands know about. 9. Mamamoo are having a comeback in 2024, y'all can call me delusional, but if I'm here, I might just ask for it too. No, but for real, I think there's a high possibility of having a Mamamoo comeback next year, to commemorate their 10th anniversary, and it's going to be a real comeback okay, not like Mumu Mumik that RBW barely promoted. We are also getting a lot of solos next year, probably Moonbyuls, Wasses and Weens. I still wonder if Solar will have one. And I think Wasa might have two releases, I know she said she was preparing for a full album for late 2024, but I just know P Nation is making her release another single around March, but this one is going to be more of her typical sound. Tend Retro Concept is having a comeback, brace yourselves, the retro concept is coming back. While I do think that it's not going to be like it was in 2020 and 2021, I do think Retro Concept is going to make a comeback, especially, because I feel like this concept is so embracing, since any kind of music style that was popular in the past will be a retro concept. And we can already see this comeback with Hive groups, that are trying to push that sound once again, it's a different kind of retro than the one in 2020, but it's still retro. Honestly, I'm down for this, because retro concept brought us many bops. As a bonus prediction, for all of the Ploris watching, our girls are having their first win next year, I can feel it, and we are finally getting three comebacks next year. I know I have been saying this for three years now, but hey, third year is the charm, right? If they have three comebacks, I feel like the third one is going to be their most popular, and it's going to give them their much-deserved music show wins, but we might actually get the first one with the second release of the year. 
Either way, the downward spiral end this year. Next year is going to be Porky's year, just you wait. And this is it for my predictions. I hope you enjoyed it, and leave your owns down below. I would try my best to reply to all of them. Thank you so much for all of your support this year, I really appreciate it. It has been a particularly hard year for me, so your support throughout the year means the world to me. I hope you can spend this Christmas with those that are most important for you, and that the next year will go smoothly for all of you. Merry Christmas everyone, Happy New Year, and thank you for watching.